Hi guys, I'm Gavin, I'm the British Butler. So I've just got back from the camping trip that I just did, so hopefully that'll be my bushcraft warm video for the British Bookworm. Today I'm going to view a book, uh, a review, a book that I read about a month ago, but I am having difficulty keeping up with the reviews on the books I'm uh, reading, to be honest with you. And it's partly because I'm trying to overcomplicate these reviews and maybe try to, you know, write down and think too much about what I'm going to say. But at the moment, I've decided I'm not going to stick to an over in depth and an analysis of each book. I'm just going to talk to you like I originally planned, like somebody who is your friend and we're just having a conversation. So I'm Gavin and I'm the British Bookworm. This channel is about following me on a process of self-education and developing my knowledge through the goal of reading a thousand books. This book I'm going to review, I found through, I spend hours of my life listening to highly intelli intelligent individuals on YouTube on a daily basis. And I wish in some ways I could watch three interviews or three programs at once. I get so deeply involved in the intellectual conversations and the knowledge from these conversations. And I wish as well that I could keep the information in my head or a lot more of the information in my head as well as watching three at once. Uh, I can't get enough of the, the intelligent, knowledgeable conversation of a long uh, interview, uh, long interviews that are established by Joe Rogan and now Jordan Peterson. So this guy found out found out through listening about this guy over the conversation, the intelligent conversation of the measures and effects of COVID nineteen and lockdowns and mandates. And so this guy got mentioned a lot and I listened to a lot of what he had to say via interviews and then without question because he's such a credible authority in my opinion I went and bought his book so the guy what is it what is it I'm so excited to do this review the psychology of totalitarianism by Matthias Desmond or Desmond I'm not sure exactly how you say his name I probably will say this a lot, but I can't get across how important this book is if you're a free thinker, if you're an intelligent person, if you feel there are things that miss in the world, in society, if you feel like there are unexplained things leading to the way the world is, the way it was, the way it is, the way it's going. This book conveys so much within this small, you know, it's only a small book, maybe a 15, 10, 15 hour read, I'm not sure, you know, but it conveys so much. And without doubt, I'm gonna tell you, I think it's one of the most important books for a free thinking, self-educating individual to have on their bookshelf. If you're a bookworm, this book has to be on your bookshelf. A lot of books are scoring high scores at the minute, and this is going to get a five out of five. If I could give it a six or a seven or a five, I would. It's a you know fuck it, I will. It's my channel, but it, it, it it's just the com the conversation is so in difficult to articulate with language. So let's start with that. In in at the moment, I put it on the back burner, but I was going to write a book about communication and manipulation and ling language ling ling linguistics and how society is being manipulated and controlled on a very subliminal level by language and linguistics there might be books out there but I was going to do write a book on it myself um, as, a, as a unique point that I believe I have on it and more and more than that but the reason why I'm mentioning that book that I wish to write myself. One of the things he talks about in this book is how we are born and how we perceive the world 
how we become to how we start to identify not being in the world but as a self identity when we see ourselves in the mirror how we put ourselves now to that person and then how that evolves from being connected by our mother and believing everything in the words we hear and the world around us is almost at one in itself with us with our consciousness state with our with our conscious state and then we see ourselves in the mirror and we identify now as an I and how that revolves into our psychological shifting and changing into the future but also how language fails us the words that we use fails us and he, he articulates this beautifully every word we use cannot itself explain or or express what we really trying to say he beautifully explains how we I know I, I've never heard anyone say this before myself, you know, in my life, but how when I'm talking to people, I feel that the words I'm saying aren't necessarily the words I want to say, and I feel at a miss and at loss with what I am actually trying to say, even though it might sound articulate. And he says that the reason, or he explains the reason why that is, is that we're using words where there always will be a better word and there will always be a better way of transcribing the events, the emotions, the feelings of that thing or of those events or of whatever we're trying to express. There will always be a possibility of another better way of explaining it ourselves. And that's one thing in this book. That's just one deep, deep, profound part of the book. The book itself is obviously, as its title goes into explaining how, as a human race, how we are driven by factors that, in in ma in mass, looks like society is brain dead. I'm going to put it like that. Now, I agree with ninety five percent of what this guy has put in this book. He goes into examples of like you could call it group think but i think that's an oversimplification but how the human conscious is designed to trust or take in certain points of data and and it's it's an unquestionable thing that we we acknowledge these these data points or these these ideas it's very hard to explain this book to be honest, without, you know, maybe I should have written notes, eh? I don't know. Well, let's have a quick sip of the British brew. He explains there's four points to go to a totalitarianism state. And he's explaining in the book that he thinks that the world is going to one in mass totalitarianism, to to totalitarianism world where everybody is basically being driven by and this is prolifically profound something he says in this book is i've never thought of it this way in my life before even as someone who's researched and read philosophy and wise sage books as such but basically we've been driven as a society by stories and narratives and that's something that he talks about back to our early development where we realize there's always the question why when your children get to a certain age of two and it's like daddy why is that man doing that uh, garden outside you know oh he's lawnmowing the door the, the grass so sweet or why well maybe because he uh, thought the grass was was too big too, too, too uh, tall, too, too, whatever. Why, why? And the question is like, why, why, why? Um, basically, when you're a kid, you realise that the adults that you look up to, or your mother, I think he uses his mother, the mother as an example, but the mother and the father are the key roles around the child. The kid starts to realise that words themselves don't actually explain reality. 
and therefore what we thought originally words were solid things that explained solid things but when we get to a certain age I think it's two I think he says it might be six months it's two I think but two I don't I think when we get to a certain age we basically realize that words don't don't work in a way that we thought they were and so what happens is we have a choice of uh, going into a narcissistic self-orientated reality or believing in uh, social stories and narratives of society it's a very comp as you can see <laughs> It's a very complicated book to try to articulate in a video ad lib. But I would say to you that this is an absolutely profound book, which basically, if you, as I said at the beginning, if you feel things are amiss and you're a free thinker, you step back to that third place where you look at the world and you can see things that aren't feel they don't feel quite right. You know things aren't right, that there is some kind of illusion at work there's some kind of dishonesty at work there's some kind of conspiracy at work then this book is for you on several points i didn't agree with him about certain subjects but they were minus things which i can't even be bothered bringing up in the book from the from, you know it's just no point because the work is the piece of work is so good that it is Something I could read five. I could read this book five times, and it wouldn't be enough. Um, one of the things that he explains in this book, which I can't remember the full details, but apparently it came out in two thousand and five. That like up, eight, up to eighty five percent of scientific peer reviewed literature was either fraudulent, dishonest, had been, um, you know, uh, falsified excuse me and that it shocked the scientific community when it came out that some people researched into different fields whether it's like psychology other science areas that are meant to be more fixed in mathematics and, and actual factual science and data that this basically shocked the scientific community and that's an important point when we talk about climate change and covid which he kind of touches upon if the scientific literature is basically at miss because of the way human psychology works, then it's um, we'll, we need to, when we consider things, we need to understand. And this is something that I've, my book is about, that if I do ever get around to writing it, we cannot trust the thinking processes within ourselves therefore how can we trust society which is led by the narratives and stories that more prominent people create that lead society to positions of success or failure and now i'm going to bring it to a close but that is one of the key points in this book and it's one of the things i was going to explain in my own book through my own philosopher that if you look at society he talks in this book about how society has permanent free floating anxiety and that we need narratives and stories that doesn't matter if they're true that we can focus on to avoid or to kind of push aside our own free floating anxiety which is caused by our or attributed to the fact that we struggle to communicate how we really feel through our own language and how our language separates us and we is this deeper than that as well it goes into how societies become a me mechanistic society and how we are devoid of each other how other people in the older in, times all the times or say ancient times or older times you would come to me and ask me to make you forge a sword for you and I would be a neighbour and we would know each other and I make my sword as a, as, a, as a request that you've made and I put my heart and soul into that sword and I can give that sword to you and I'm seeing there's a human connection there but the, the 
industrialization of the world took that unique uh, bond between people away out of society so people became more isolated and lonely in the in, in, in industrialized revolution i agree with that to a point i'd say i don't the concept is true but a lot of cultures like the british culture in the industrialization while i don't agree with a lot of it into the by today standards society was a lot more close to close together people in streets would be much more friendly and know each other um, when Britain was Britain, putting it bluntly, um, people would all get together and, and have a community. So I don't necessarily agree with that isolation as a complete as a complete correct statement, but I do understand his point. And so today with these, these the internet and mobile phones, we are so distant and that opens up the risk of people creating narratives and stories by the from the elite or from the leaders of the world or people in prominent positions who can mislead society because society wants to have a unity or a goal whether it's false or true it doesn't matter and so climate change is a very very good example even though he doesn't really tell, explain his views on that covid 8 covid covid 18 but yeah covid 19 is a perfect example a prime example of that and it's like reading this is like it's like um i'm trying to find a, met a, a metaphor reading this book when you like i've spent i spent hours of my day researching and looking at different things and listening to people with massive intelligence and supreme you know like jordan peterson joe rogan and all his guests I listen and try to educate myself on mess on as much as possible and it's never enough you know it's never ever enough and never do I know enough but when you're doing that and you when you when you're doing that for me personally as as, as a human being when I re read this it was like wow that explains everything I'm seeing a bit like the Lucifer effect I'll put that book there that book did a, a wonderful job on a deep, deep level explaining society, human beings, that we human beings are not quite what we think they are from an individual point of view. We're not quite what we think we are. In fact, we're not. We're just fucking not. So, in all, I'm going to give this book, I know I'm being a bit tongue in cheek, but I get a bit like a six out of five. I'm going to give it a five out of five. It is an absolute must read. And I've missed so much out of this book in this. Um, one more thing, actually. One of the wonderful things about this book, and I'm going to use the word resonates with me because it was absolutely beautiful. In, in the world we live in, there's a harmonic resonance that we're losing. Unless we are aware of it, we will lose it in the sense of today society isn't understanding that we have to have the human interactions with each other. We're all resonating and sending signals and vibrations of energy. The things are mechanistic in nature, which he talks about the Enlightenment era and the mechanistic thought and naturalism and how we lose a lot of ourselves if you wish the spirituality side of things and he argues that in physics and quantum physics and the world we live in and it's a beautifully explained uh, topic in this book there's an energy and a resonance in, in life that's in, you could argue invisible but it's the life source of what makes us what we are and if we don't understand that we risk losing our humanity we, we risk losing our humanity with ourselves and with each other and each person connects with each person even on an invisible resonance and he goes into scientific evidence of that to an, to an, to an effect 
So with that, I'm not going to go into too much more. Um, I don't believe in the views. He's not a conspiracy theorist, by the way. This guy is a top expert in the subject and he's got a PhD in it. So I'm not, by a long way, I'm not uh, saying that he supports conspiracy theories because he doesn't. But that is a different subject. I don't agree with him on his idea about the way it's a sort of not a choreographed it's like a natural natural choreographed event things like what happened with COVID-19 and what's going on with climate change I don't agree with that I personally think that there is an orchestrated agenda behind these things and on the wars and there is and that the process is not necessarily accidental but he has a beautiful point in that in his own interpretation explanation of natural laws that means that things can fit into what seems designed or planned but there's natural laws and he goes into that which is just not in my mind right now but it's something I've never heard about before but it's a beautiful explanation to many things within nature so you can have things in nature that look designed but there's a natural design process within it in in the in the physics of it in the uh, randomness of it so I mean I could probably explain it a bit better and I hope that this book review will encourage you to buy this book because it is definitely a hundred percent brilliant brilliant read Matthias Desmond if you ever see this video thank you so much for this book and yeah I can't say enough about it can't say enough of it brilliant brilliant masterpiece of writing as well it's so well written so well written so with that guys this has been the british bookworm if you like this video please give us a like and subscribe to my channel and i hope that you've got something from this video if you haven't i'm sorry if you have thank you for your time see you later